What up friends and aspiring artists, thank you for joining me in another video. If you've been following me for a while, you know I love the Arches Rough. Um, so I decided to also get this one, the Arches uh, Hot Press. Give it a try. Um, so we'll do an, like a quick unwrapping um, and we'll see what's inside. And I wasn't actually expecting it to be this uh, strong on the landscape orientation. Uh, I guess I should read the details better before I buy products. <laughs> but, um, let's get to it and see how this paper is. Okay, friends, I'm super excited. Uh, let's open this up. I'll use my trustworthy ruler for ripping stuff away. Um, I really love Arsh papers or Arshes. I still haven't figured out how it's pronounced. Love them. And... Um, I already did a review of the rough, the orange one. I'll add a link in the description box below. And I'm super excited to try this one. I do prefer um, rough cold press, but I don't know, we'll see. So, as always, there's this uh, instructions that says you need to peel off the sheets from here. There's a black one, uh, sort of get you practicing on how to open it so what put in inside here and then just cut through and what's funny is this black paper on the beginning i'm actually going to use it for uh painting something white on a black paper i will use it in the near future let's get rid of it i mean not trash it because wow this is really smooth let me try and Hope you get a view of it. I'm not sure you can see it very well, but this is really smooth. There's no texture, like almost none. Very interesting. I'm very curious to try this out. So what we will do is we will try this out and compare it with the Arsh Rough. I have a scrap piece of the Arsh Rough paper here. Um, and let's see how these two are in comparison. Okay, so I just uh, sketched in some random um, shapes here and there's no better brush to test this paper on than the black silver velvet, silver black velvet here. Finally, man, finally it focused. I've been trying for hours. Okay, kind of, kind of focused. Um, so let's get to it. I'm gonna wet the brush here. And I hope the lighting conditions are good because I'm now using light from the outside, uh, not my lamp here. So let's uh, just mix some hmm, mm -mm -mm. ultramarine blue. This time it's really ultramarine blue. It's not Prussian blue and not the opposite. <laughs> Any of you who are watching my all of my videos will understand. I had a big mess up with the Prussian and... Um, anyway, let's get to it. I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, and you can already see the huge difference in the texture of the rough and this one. So, um, I'll just try and fill in a wash using one color here. And let's see. Uh, wow, this is kind of majestic, I have to say. <laughs> this is very interesting, actually. Hmm. It's like the paint gets soaked, um, but not. it doesn't stay on the surface like many other um, hot press papers I've I've used so far it's like when you do this it doesn't just move the paint it actually interacts with the layer that exists there already and it's pretty nice let's uh let's try another color here in one of the smaller squares and let's see what we get I'm gonna add a little bit of matter lake deep to the mixture I really love this combination I actually just finished a painting using this combination uh, maybe I'll show it to you when I finish with this. 
And wow, this is nice. I really like it. It has a nice feeling. And let's try to add some more red into the red. Let's see how that works. Interesting. So you can continue interacting with it um, a bit more. Now, just for comparison's sake, uh, let me do the same here on the Arsh Rough on the left, because I'm not sure if any of you have watched the other review I have. Uh, so I'm just going to paint that in here. And the only main difference you'll notice from this simple demonstration is you see the surface, how it comes through. See these empty spots? Need to fill them up actually. Um, sometimes when the brush is too dry, you'll find that you're having a hard time filling them up which is a disadvantage, but uh, sometimes what you'll find is that you can, many times, you can use them to your advantage uh, as texture. So that's, an, that's a good use that it has. Um, so with the hot press, you actually um, don't get that. Now, from what I know, the, another advantage that the rough one has is that the color or the paint stays uh, wet for a while and you can just add in some other colors. I don't think that will be the case now as I'm just putting another layer. It's more like glazing than uh, let's try and mix in some uh, red here. It's more like glazing than uh, actually working with the existing layer. You see it just glazes over it and let's see if the original layer is dry. You see it is dry. So this one uh, appears to dry much faster than the rough. F for the rough, I can just go back and you see how it just interacts with the existing paint. And we can wait a little longer and see, uh, but I think this one dries um, much faster. At least that's my first impression. Um, let's now try a little bit more wet brush and see what we get. Um, sorry, not wet, I mean dry. <laughs> Um, just take some dry uh, cerulean blue, I think, and some ultramarine. Try and keep it pretty dry. Uh, let's let's go ahead and put one here. So you see the dry layer just it just slides on the paper so nicely. I have to say this is really nice. You can feel the smooth texture. I wasn't I didn't think it would be this smooth uh, because I do have the Strathmore I think hot pressed the 400 series and it still has this grain thing. Now there is some texture on this one. It's not entirely free of texture. Um, but but yeah, it's much less prominent than in the rough. <laughs> I'm just stopping mid-sentences, I'm sorry. Uh, let's try some uh, mixing like that. Let's just change here and see how these two mix together. And if we get a smooth transition. Nice. Um, I really, I'm really curious about how much I'll grow to love this paper because uh, I have this weird passion, actually. I never talked about it, but uh, it's not a weird passion. It's just that you see this, the moment, the brush. I want to zoom in a bit and let it focus. Is it focused? It's focused on the rough. Let's get this out of here. Okay, now, uh, I really like the moment the brush first touches the paper. It's just something that I love. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but finishing a drawing and then just going in with that first layer of watercolor, man, that's the best. And I really like to maybe be even uh, a bit um, economical, economic or economical? I think economical with my use of paint because I like to leave a lot of spaces white and I'm wondering if you can hear the wind. There's a strong wind outside. Look how beautiful it blurs together, merges, just beautiful. 
Let me try uh, some burnt sienna. It's it's a color that's not really. You know what? No, it's disgusting. Let's try. Uh, let's try this um, type of quinacridone rose. I think it's called. It's close to the Madrilite Deep. Very nice. I really like this paper. Let's now just clear the brush a bit and use more water. And now just almost only water. You see, it has a nice um, sort of blending effect. I really like it. Um, I wonder, let's try and lay down a layer. Um, Let's try to lay down a layer and sort of um, blend it into the paper without any rough edges. Let's do that. I'm curious to know your experience with uh, watercolor paper in general and which one you prefer. Um, I tried so far the Arch Rough, this one, the Strathmore 400, and that's mostly it. Um, I didn't try too many types of paper. Oh, I am waiting for my Fabriano to get here. Um, and I'm, I'm curious about that too, because I know a lot of people like the Fabriano. Uh, Artistico, I think. Just beautiful. I like the touch of this paper. I really like it. Mm. And with the other one here, with the rough, um, you can see if my brush is dry. Oh, you can see this. Let me zoom out. You can see if my brush is even a bit uh, dry. Look how it just makes the texture of the paper pop. And then if I wet it a bit, it merges it together, you see? This is really nice too. So you can't get that effect here. Let's try with the side of the brush. You see, you really can't get that. Um, so that's uh, a downside if you're planning on getting this effect. Um, also, what I notice about this one is that it seems to have dots in the paper, even though it doesn't have a strong texture, when you put a layer on, it does bring out some spots on the paper. Anyway, uh, I hope you were able to, to see this. So the moment I lay down a layer, let's just try water. You know what? Let's try without any pigment. I'm just gonna take some water. No, it doesn't bring it out. And I know it's not color coming from the... It's not uh, dots coming from the paint because it doesn't happen on uh, my other papers. But very interesting. Very interesting paper. Um, let's zoom out and sort of um, compare the stats on the paper itself. So after some more experimentation, I can definitely say that the paper dries much faster on the hot press. Um, let's compare the two. Just really quickly, so this one says grain satin, and this one says uh, just um, rough. Um, so that's the, the only difference basically, and look at the size here. This is something I'm still curious about. I'm not sure actually what I will do with this in terms of the sizing, because I wasn't expecting it to be so landscape-ish. Uh, so as you can see, it's very long. It's good for panoramas or scenes that you want to catch uh, a lot of stuff. I may try to s sort of split it into not physically, but just work here and then here uh, on both sides and sort of use each paper for um, two paintings. Um, anyway, this was my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's wrap up the video. Friends, I want to thank you all so much for watching the video. Um, I just wanted to show you, I received a few other stuff uh, in the mail. Uh, one of them is this, and I saw a lot of people uh, do a review of this. It's the Mijello, I think it's called. The um, palette for 18 uh, pigments. It has 18 slots for putting in uh, the paint. So this one, no, I know a lot of people reviewed. I may review it as well, uh, because it's pretty cool. And I also got this uh, nice white gel pen uh, that I will probably use on, the, on some black paper and see if I can produce something cool with it. And of course, I think I will publish something similar as a video. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the vid and learned something new. Uh, let me know what you think and what kind of watercolor papers are your favorite.
And don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Lironian, the number three. I'll see you there if you want to see pictures, behind the scenes, all sorts of cool stuff, more uh, tools and equipment that I get. Definitely be sure to follow me there. And I'll see you again really soon in another video. Take care.